Hey, I am Greg Keller. I am the company's co-founder and chief strategy officer. And today we're going to talk about some basic principles of zero trust. And what you'll see is some of the basics and the background of ZTA as it's often referred to, but you'll see an implementation. Um, let's refer to it as a lean implementation because zero trust is a philosophy that can incorporate a lot of different technologies and tools. We're gonna kind of whiteboard a very straightforward layman's way of achieving zero trust principles with the Jump Cloud platform. So let's dive into it. First, what is zero trust? Let's start with some basic premise. Trust nothing. Verify everything. Zero trust, trust nothing, verify everything. This simply means that when a resource is being accessed, what is a resource? It could be an application. It could be a computer. It could be a piece of network infrastructure. These are resources. That resource doesn't necessarily know who is coming into it to gain access and use it. That is the trust part. All right, you have to develop a form of trust to get trust enabled between the acting user and the resource is the verification stage. Trust nothing, verify everything. All right, let's kind of dive into some basic principles. Again, think of it as the layman's approach of achieving zero trust principles. We'll kind of dive into conditional access um, and we're gonna do this with the Jump Cloud platform. Okay, so let's break down some of the aspects of utilizing the Jump Cloud platform when setting up a basic zero trust perimeter. So first, using our trusty whiteboard pen again, we're going to put Jump Cloud in the middle of this whole equation. This is Jump Cloud's open, directory platform like an active directory or in the old days an active directory or modern variants now including jump cloud this is the epicenter of access control this is what directories do this is as you know if you're a customer this is precisely what jump cloud does for you so if this thing is in the middle let's start to talk a little bit about the transactions that occur so first and foremost you have users and jump cloud as a directory stores the user information its set of credentials and the things that it has access to all right so let's first start with one of the first things a jump cloud customer will manage and provide access to and that is the employee's computer the user's computer macbook a windows machine uh, a linux laptop etc this is the device that they will be utilizing to gain access to stuff, all right? And as we asserted before, that stuff can be widely varied, applications, networks, all the things, okay? Uh, other pieces of infrastructure in the cloud. So let's set up a basic model of how Jump Cloud implements this and using the, uh, the trust nothing and verify everything aspect. But let's complete this sort of use case. This Jump Cloud managed user on this Jump Cloud managed laptop needs to get access to this cloud based application. All right. So this is an application, maybe it's a finance app, who knows? It's something that using Jump Cloud's SAML services is providing access to. So again, Jump Cloud is the access control vehicle. Let's go back. It's managing and, and trusting the device. It knows the user account, but it's also responsible for the access to this application. So in the old world, when an application was on-prem, you would take your computer, you'd log into your network, and the network, typically using an antiquated domain control system, would just know, you're on my network, therefore you must be trusted feel free to go and get access to that application or file server. This is not our experience anymore in the cloud world. The whole internet 
when you really look at this, is to be untrusted. You're not in an office anymore. This person probably is in the confines of their house, somewhere far away and un likely unmanaged, absolutely unmanaged by your corporate IT team. Inside of this house is probably a wireless router, right, signaling Wi-Fi that this particular IT person knows nothing about. It's probably given to that a home user by their ISV, like Comcast or, or some other similar ISV. So this is sort of an untrusted environment. But again, what are we trying to do? We just need to get this person safe and secure access to this thing. So where does Jump Cloud start to come in? Number one, we're going to go through some basic principles of this transaction. One, trusting the user trusting, here I'll just do hashes there, trusting the device and trusting the network. Okay, so how will Jump Cloud sort of take control over that scenario and lay the foundation for some very basic zero trust principles? Here, here's how this all works. Number one, on the device, we obviously have an agent Again, as customers, many of you use this agent. This agent does a lot of chores like managing policies and securing the and encrypting the hard drive, all those kind of good things. But the one thing that we want to do in this transaction is make sure that this is a verified device. So Jump Cloud is laying down certificates inside of that device that says this is Jump Cloud managed. It can be used for safe work. All right. Two, so that is the, the sort of the first part of the journey. Two, the verification of this user is also uh, a big part of this scenario. And we're going to walk through that transaction through multi-factor authentication using Jump Cloud's Protect. And then three, access into this particular app. So when you have these basic principles, what does Jump Cloud do? First of all, it needs to know the network that you're sort of traversing across, right? So what Jump Cloud will enable the IT admin to do is set a, a uh, call them a base of modifiable policies. So think a little bit like if then else. For example, if the user is on a network that is known, i.e. a range of IP addresses that is known to Jump Cloud in that particular organization, let them through. All right, that's the, consider that the, the very basic first policy. So let's assume that this particular network is known and registered with Jump Cloud. Boom. So the user is attempting on this laptop to access this application. Boom. The, the policy set, trust the network, that's good. Now let's complicate this a little bit more. Let's say the user is a little bit lazy, okay? And again, remember, this is a privileged uh, application, like a finance application. Let's say the user walks over into their kitchen and is on their personally purchased Windows machine. Maybe it's just sitting, it's a laptop in the kitchen. Maybe it's their kid's computer. They fire up the browser they, to traverse over into this application and the same transaction occurs, all right? So we know the network, but the agent isn't on the machine, the certificates aren't on that machine, this particular transaction flowing through that network, ah, not going to happen. We don't trust the machine, we don't trust the device. So, so there's a couple of ways that we can maneuver in our conditional access policies, again, Zero trust, you don't trust that thing, you don't trust that machine to do work for your company. So you have options. Can you be a little lenient with our conditional access policies? You can. You can say, well, listen, if you're gonna access a non-verified machine, then I'm gonna allow that to occur, but I am gonna force you to verify who you are, and that's where Jim Cloud's Protect, which is our MFA tool, push to verify, will come in, and if that user and that policy will allow it, it will say, okay, I'm going to let you through. 
So these are the very basic principles of how this would occur. So what, what did this sort of whole transaction look like? We had elements of trusting the user through MFA, through JC Protect, which is our own MFA variant. You've already understood that the world of trusting the device is important through the installation of our agent and then the, the silent certificates we lay down to say, this is a good device, you can do good work on it. And then finally, the network transactions. Are these networks or geographic locations around the globe, for example, you have a nation state that you do not want traffic coming in from, then block it. All of those are variances of network traversals. We have the policies that will restrict that. So trusting the user, trusting the device, and trusting the network through GemCloud's conditional access policies are all the basic key ingredients for laying down a, uh, a very straightforward, very cost-effective approach at Zero Trust implementations. So I hope this was helpful, and please visit gemcloud.com for more information on GemCloud's conditional access policies and our approach at Lean Zero Trust. Please subscribe and check out more content from us.